In this webcast, I'm going to show you how to set up an environment using PyTorch and CUDA. So on the PyTorch homepage, I'm going to click Getting Started. And they've made it really easy uh, to set up in a Python environment. So what we need to select is the build that we're going to use. We can either use the latest stable one, uh, which is 1.0, or we can go for the LTS, which stands for long-term support, which is 1.8.2. So I'll select that. I'm on the Windows operating system. I'm going to be using pip for the installation, and I'm going to be using CUDA 11.1. So before we install, we need to check if our GPU can support CUDA. So for Google, for CUDA compatible GPU, we get a link to developer.nvidia.com and here we can see the GPU compatibility. So I'm running here on an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090. So if I click on the link for GeForce and Titan products, you can see that the 3090 is supported so it should be fine installing CUDA 11. So if your GPU isn't listed as being CUDA supported, you have the option of installing PyTorch using the CPU. You'll still be able to learn a bit about PyTorch and train some neural networks. However, you'll find that when you're looking at more complex networks, working with custom vision, and especially working with transfer learning, that the performance is not gonna be great. You can, however, look at leveraging cloud-based services such as Azure Machine Learning. And I'll show you how you can do that in some of my other webcasts. Now we also need to make sure that CUDA is installed. I don't have it installed on this machine. So I'm going to browse to CUDA install. And go to the downloads and select Windows. So I'm currently running Windows 10. So I'm going to select for the network install, which will be a smaller install. And it will download the components from the network as I run the install. Okay, so I'm going to extract the package. I can accept the licensing agreement. If we go into the custom section, we'll see all the components that are going to be, going to be installed and I'll select everything and click next. So it's saying here that I've got Visual Studio running. I'm going to shut down Visual Studio. I can then retry that. And it's running through the install. This will take a few minutes. I'll pause the recording whilst this installation runs. And the installation has finished, so I can close that window. So the next thing we need to do is to run this command in pip in a Python environment. So to do that, in Visual Studio 22, I'm going to go File New Project. I'm going to select Python Application and click Next. I'll call the project PyTorch Test and create that project. We can see here that we're using the global default Python environment. Now I'd like to create a separate Python environment for installing PyTorch. And the reason is I may want to install different versions. And I don't want to create one for each specific project because they can take up a lot of space on the hard drive. So on my C drive, I've created a folder called Python environments where I can generate these environments that I can share between different projects. So here I'm going to add an environment I'll give it the name of Torch Env. And I want to make this environment available globally so I can use it in different projects. I'll just drop that in as a description. We don't really need anything more. I'm going to select Python 3.9 as the environment type. And for the environment location, I'm going to select the Python environments folder and click create. So you can see that we've got Torch Env created at that location. And it's currently quite small, 13.3 meg, but the size will increase greatly when I install the PyTorch components. So what I need is a command prompt at this particular environment so I can run the pip command to install. So if I type pip, you can see that we've got pip installed there. And I think this install is actually using pip3, but we can see that the command is running. So I can drop back here and I can copy this command here, which is going to be the command line to store, install all of the components. So let's copy this, drop back to the command prompt and run that command. So it's going to take a while to install. I'll speed up the video as the install is running so you don't have to sit through all of this. So we can see that the install was successful. So it's giving me the option to upgrade pip, which I can do. If I just copy this command in, this should do that. Okay, so we've got the new version of pip installed. And if I type pip list, you can see that we've got NumPy, Pillow, 
and the various torch components torch torch audio and torch vision and they're running with the CUDA 11.1 versions there you can see that the PyTorch environment is now 5.54 gigabytes. This is pretty large, and this is the reason why I'd like to share this environment between many different projects when I'm working with PyTorch. But I don't want to install Py PyTorch on the single global environment because I may want to use different versions and also have the option to create additional environments if I'm working with Keras and TensorFlow and so on. And it's generally much better to use these shared environments rather than just trying to install everything in the global environment because you could get problems with versioning differences on the various packages. So back to Visual Studio, let's just test if we can access the GPU. So Googling onto Stack Overflow, there's a quick check to see if PyTorch is using the GPU. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this code here, bang it into my Python file. We don't need these lines here. We should just be able to run these and... And I'm just gonna print out these, these results here. We've got some squiggly lines thing saying that the torch could not be resolved, uh, but that's just because uh, we've only just installed it now and that should correct itself. So let's just see if this is going to run. And we can see that CUDA is available. It's the device zero. We've got the device object there. You can see that there's one device and it's an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090. So I can now start programming and leveraging that GPU from within PyTorch.